and the best it would mean the world to me because not only would three black women be standing firmly in the work that they did and knowing the work that they contributed to changing the narrative most of the time i check out people need that this beautiful melanin goddess that's before me hello Coming up on another act, I sit down with MJ Rodriguez, who talks about Pose, the possibility of making Emmy history, and why she needs to be a little bit silly every now and again. MJ, I want to go back to the beginning. How did Pose come to you in the first place, and where were you um, in your career at the time it came to you? So the first time I even heard about Pose was through a breakdown on Telsey and Company's website. And I saw these characters, Candy, Lulu, uh, Electra. I saw all of these characters, Angel. And then I saw Blanca and I saw her description and I was like, oh, I wanna be like her. Like I wanna achieve to be like her. I wanna embody her. There's a piece of me that is a part of her. I need to do this. It all snowballed after that. I was literally in the, mists of trying to figure out what was happening with my career. I was possibly about to get my first Broadway show, but I was also out of work for about three years. Mm-hmm. Well, it actually had hit four years at that point. And mm-hmm. um, so I was going to give up. And I remember telling my mama, I was like, mommy, um, I think I'm about to just find a regular nine to five job and live my little life and try to blend in as much as I can. And hopefully there's protection around. And she was like, no, no, I feel it. It's right around the corner. And she was right, girl. Like, literally, it was right around the corner, like a week around the corner. When you when you weren't working for those four years, what do you attribute that to? What was happening? Growth. Mm-hmm. I would say without the work, it taught me how to survive. It taught me how to build a thick skin because there was always going to be a no around the corner, especially for a girl like me. I mean, I got it all. You're too specific. I don't know if they want you for something like this. I don't know if we've written something like this for you. You should try this role. And I was just like, no, no, that's not how it's going to work here. Um, and with that, what came the nose from their end and also on my end, no work. Um, so I just had to learn. And it also just taught me that, you know, you don't miss nada. You miss nothing. Everything that is built for you is for you. And when Pose came, that's exactly what it was. You're a trans woman of color working in a hospital. I'm just trying to stay afloat. Is this about your legacy? No, it's about our legacy. You know, we've come a long way, I think, from cisgendered actors playing trans characters, but it still feels like there's some more progress that needs to be made. Where can improvement happen? And what has to happen for you to feel like progression is really moving in the right direction? And I say that because I think Pose gave us an opportunity to see the wealth of actors that we had been underutilizing for so many years. So what else can happen in order for this not to be a headline and a talking point anymore? I mean, I think what needs to happen is more space needs to be opened up. You know, um, there's a small percentage of trans women or maybe even trans men too, who don't have spaces to work in or be artistic in, whether it be in front of the screen or behind it. I think there needs to be more space opened up for us so that we can equally have uh, the just due to different parts. You know, um, I was never opposed to a cis person playing a trans part only number one, if you did it right and you did the research. And also Mm -hmm. if there was space for us to also tell y'all stories, like how y'all are telling ours, that has not completely happened yet. I mean, we're we're here, you know, and a a good group of the girls are here and we're in the spaces. I mean, it's not just me, it's Angelica, it's Dominique, it's uh, Haley Sahar, it's India Moore, it's Laverne Cox, it's, the list can go on, but there's much more than us. And that's one of the reasons why it's kind of hard uh, to watch us as person play our role because there's not that many of us. And there's so many different types of trans people out there. You know, it's not just one set look. Yeah, and we get to really see that diversity, I think, and complexity in, in Pose. And I think what makes it feel even more important is that these women, these characters aren't treated as um, sidekicks. They're fully realized characters. And we hadn't seen that 
before. And because we hadn't seen that before, it really put us all in a position to have such this incredible impact on society at large. At what point did you realize that this was more than just an acting job, um, that this was really a chance to open up conversations in households that probably didn't have an entry point to talk about this before? I would say with probably within the third week was when I found out that this was something a bit bigger than me. Mm -hmm. um, this was something that was going to not only be entertainment, but it was gonna be educational and people needed this. And within that third week, I was like, okay, so I'm not only telling the story about my sisters, but I'm telling how we fit into the broader scheme and how we've changed a lot too. And people need to know that, you know, and people need to know how we were the pioneers to a lot of things that a lot of people didn't know before. Um, so yeah, I think that was the biggest part of it all. The, mm -hmm. the grand scheme, the bigger picture. It didn't have to just do with the characters. It didn't just have to do with Blanco or Pray Tell, but it had to do with the community and mm -hmm. what we do as a family and how we survive as Black people, as Latina people, how we fit in the spaces that may not even think we fit because maybe our personality is too big or maybe it's this you know, we needed people to see that. And yeah, I'm going back to it again, but the third week is when I realized that the impact that the show was gonna have and people need that so they can understand a bit better. Look, MJ, I'm ready for history to be made. I need to see a nomination I know, I know. Brought for you this Emmy cycle. And I know that I'm not alone. And quite frankly, there's a lot of buzz and conversation about not only you getting this nomination, but the possibility of us seeing something we haven't seen before, which is three Black women, Uzo, Journey, and yourself, to be nominated in a lead actress category. What would that mean to you if that were to happen and if that were to happen for this role in particular? It would mean the world literally it would mean the world to me because not only would three black women be standing firmly in the work that they did and knowing the work that they contributed to changing the narrative but no matter if it's me uzo or anybody going up there at least i can look at that person and say i'm glad i'm glad i'm seeing it i'm glad i'm glad i get to be on the end to watch it in a nomination just seeing it either one of us you know, and um, also to be up there and having something to say and having the space to say it in a space that was never thought before. For me specifically, mm. a lot of people, you know, look at me and they obviously see women, but when they find out trans, then it changes. And getting a nomination like that and possibly even be able to win would tell every single last one of those people that look what I did. And also the generation who was told that they can't do it. Mm. Look what happened and look at what hard work does and look at what resilience does and look at what goodness does and, and you know, being persistent in your craft. Like it would mean a lot to me because it would change the landscape. We've already done it with this show and it would just be even more historic to just be up there you know, speaking from my heart, having a little speech. Yeah. Listen, I want to see it. A lot of us want to see it. I hope I see it. it, you know, and if they don't, I'm not mad at it either. Well, listen, it sounds like you were in some ways all about creating your own opportunities. At least that's what we hope is happening because you went viral not too long ago and you revealed your dream role was a Marvel character and we all need this. Um, how does this character move you and, and why Electra? Why would that be just the penultimate for you? Well, one, I just feel like she's a badass and she doesn't play any games and um, she takes no prisoners. And Electra has a, a serious backstory too. I mean, her, I think her parents were killed and then she got taken in by another, you know, King Penn, King Penn himself, I think, or she was an assassin to him. Mm. And um, I just like that storyline because she has, she has no one, but yet she's still, and she's using her rampage. She's using her anger to get it out, but she also finds a space of justice. And um, I like that. And I, I feel like I'm a badass. I feel like I can do anything that that woman can do um, physically. And I also Good. feel like I look like her, you know, so. Yes. Somebody out there, <laughs> cast me for her. Can y'all write it, please? Listen. I'll do it, anything you want me to do. Please. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. 
No more. Kevin Feige, call this woman right now and cast her in this role. <laughs> MJ Rodriguez, you are a goddess. Thank you so much for stopping by and doing this today. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.